Gotta love tech. So lots of fun. It um, all has come so far. And yet uh, when you're on for as long as uh, some of us have been on, little glitches come into play your patience and playing uh, with us. So we were just in Africa. Now we're going all the way back up north to Romania. And as I said a, a, a couple of speakers ago, well, it's fun to connect with people we already know for this event. Again, my joy is meeting people in that that I haven't really spent time with and haven't talked to. And Alina's one of those folks, and you're going to love her approach to uh, our world, the I mean, not our world, but our profession, gamification. Uh, she was named top 50 global thought leaders and influencers in ed tech. So it's somebody we shouldn't be very, very aware of. And so we're really happy that uh, she took the opportunity to be here with us. And uh, I, just to speed things along, I would like you to come up Right now, Alina, and the best way to do that is turn on your camera, turn on your mic, which will be down there below. There you go. Hi. And uh, I'll get out of the way to make sure we have enough battery. <laughs> All right, so you just launch, make sure we're, <laughs> we're good to go. Thank you. Yeah. So over the last hour, we had some technical issues, me and Jonathan, each on our own. Now, what I want to say before we start is the fact that uh, I'm using my mobile data, though I rented this place for the session, and uh, be limited or not. Uh, another thing is that I'll be sharing my, uh, my screen, so I won't be able to see any questions until the end of the session when I can take uh, any of your questions and answer them. So I'll just be like an arrow and uh, present you with uh, the stuff that ha I have prepared for you today. And hopefully those information uh, will would, would be useful for you, maybe. Some of them are generalizations. Uh, nevertheless, I have prepared some gifts for you in the, in the end, some free gifts, as gifts should be. And those uh, are... Uh, free consultancy for blockchain, metaverse, and uh, gamification, if any of you need that. So I'll just be sharing my screen now and uh, hop in. <laughs> okay, let's see what we have. Okay. I think you can see my screen right now. So... I wanted to talk to you today about what we can do as individuals further than what we already had so far with gamification, local businesses, online businesses on Web 2.0. Maybe I will not be talking so much about uh, the metaverse at this point, but uh, feel free to ask me anything about how gamification design can be implemented and how it's done at this moment in the metaverse. For now, I just want you to, to see some things about me. Maybe they're relevant, maybe they're not. The idea is that I uh, started in 2013 at uh, Wharton School, Pennsylvania. Maybe some of you already know about uh, Professor Kevin Verbach, who delivered that Coursera course at some point. And I was there, very interested in how I can apply neuro-linguistic programming and gamification uh, for modeling uh, human behavior in a, an ethical manner. Uh, so far, yeah, so I have some achievements. You can see them. I, I, when I call them achievements, they're not really professional achievements. For me, it's creating fair rewards for the end users, for, for the ones that benefit from the product or the solutions. Uh, that I create. So I'm not going to talk about them. You can see them and we can talk about these niches uh, at any point at the end of the session. More about me. Uh, this is like a, some core beliefs, you know, <laughs> I stand on as a gamification designer since 2013, being in the blockchain since 2011 and a neuro-linguistic programming expert. 
I'm a designer of opportunities and infinite assets. That means once I create the strategy for opportunities, from there on, the rewards should be infinite in the design, in the rewards. So everything I create is based on the core belief that the energy of the consumers, the players, the end user needs to be supported by a fair system of rewards. We'll talk about that in the end, why energy is the new currency, especially in the blockchain. And just like data is the new gold. Therefore, in fintech, edtech, web3, decentralized spaces, or anything or anything else that I create relies on highly rewarding system of rewards for those that engage, for those that hop in and experience that product or solution. Yeah, we live in a time of building communities and tribes, and I don't mean uh, Facebook groups. We have communities on and tribes on like s social finance uh, front ends on every blockchain right now, and that's very relevant because they create a critical mass, the the adoption, the crowd that comes in the momentum to experience what you put out there in the momentum for them and the gamification culture has to offer the right energy narrative for this context okay uh, a little bit of what we knew of course there's so much more in the gamification in web 2 we had the experience design where you already know that the gamification design can be used to provide a more interactive and ex engaging experience for the end users. Um, we have the businesses purposes, the change management, change agents, the role plays for the change agents and so on, the retention, engagement, loyalty, advocacy, finance, so on, you know. And some extra, uh, back in 2014, I was working with some people from India and there was there, they were very keen on creating uh, CRM products, uh, marketing automation products, uh, gamified ones uh, on their platforms for easy access and to drive user engagement and customer service. So we have a lot so far in gamification. We had it applied from education to technology to everywhere, even for, for Pepsi and <laughs> Nike. Now, in this session, I just need you to understand that's more, and maybe some of you already know that. Uh, that's why I wanted to make some generalizations and just show you a bit of here and there and what I'm doing. First of all, I want to tell you about how I got it to mix LP and gamification. It was 2013 when the guys from uh, New Zealand and Paris from Conversology invited me to talk at the first boot camp uh, in gamification. Uh, and I prepared a session about um, how I was designing uh, gamified products and solutions for companies from South Africa, like uh, Idea Bounty uh, and others. So I wanted to tell the world that it's very easy to use ethically NLP, gamification, and human resources to boost employees' motivation at any level. Uh, it was a success. I was very happy, and I'm still friends with those people, uh, though they're not into gamification anymore, but uh, it, it was a global thing, right? right there right at that point uh and we mapped it very very effectively i might say yeah so a little bit more from back then <laughs> but i don't want to get you bored so out of just a few features uh about how i'm using neuro linguistic programming techniques in gamification because uh, just like a blockchain, uh, using NLP might be seen as uh, disruptive, might be seen as shifting the paradigm of what it already is. But that's not true because we have specifics of anchoring, specifics of rapport, creating the rapport of the narrative and human behavior, everything that comes from human psychology, we have it in neuro-linguistic programming for maybe 15 years 
or more. And those are in a, a great, great gamification designs out there as well. So a few elements that I'm using, it's language, emotion, stimulus, uh, visual input and visual stimulation. And that, of course, creates a more engaging and rewarding experience. But with NLP, you can touch exactly the anchoring point of different uh, human characteristics. And again, I'm using NLP techniques to create messages and scenarios, anchoring timelines to create timelines in the narrative to boost retention and advocacy. And that goes well from Web 3 to Web 2 advocacy as well. Because uh, unfortunately, Web 3 is not so developed right now on a single social media. They're still developing <clears throat> alternatives for, for, for YouTube, for Twitter, for Pinterest. And that happens in different blockchains out there. At this point, we're merging that hand in hand when I'm designing the game, when I'm doing the gamification design, I'm implementing uh, this strategy of people getting points just to share content from Web3 decentralized spaces to Web2 to boost retention and advocacy. Now, another tool is creating a generative system of rewards, generative and regenerative. <laughs> um, and that's based on a progressive system that includes environment, beliefs, behavior, identity, belonging, and mission. And why do I say that? Well, uh, about an hour ago or so, Anne Coupons was talking about Maslow. Well, when we're using gamification, we're going far more than Maslow pyramid of change, of motivation. We're going with the DILT's regenerative pyramid for uh, neurological change. So people will they enter into a change management program experience, uh, reshifts that shifts their internal beliefs, their internal environment, who they are, their identity. So they experience a whole new, uh, new paradigm, especially in the metaverse when their belonging uh, uh, shifts or an ecosystem or in tribes that I was talking about in the blockchain. Anyway, so changing behavior, that's another strategy uh, with a lot of tools that I'm using uh, in the gamification design. And all the NLP gamify strategies uh, in those designs that I'm building focus on improving the end user satisfaction and their behavior. We have data most of the time. And when we don't have, have data, we, we're testing the products, of course, and improving on that. That's why it's uh, an agent-centric uh, thing. Mm, more honey in the gamify design. We're all bees at some point, right? <laughs> Why gamification? Just a few points why gamification in Web 3.0 in the decentralized spaces is a paradigm shift, represents a paradigm shift. Uh, we have some fields that are very well known right now that, you know, industries that have adopted or departments that have adopted um, gamified elements uh, or strategies in the blockchain. And those are found in front ends and DApps, decentralized applications. Marketing in Hasher, in, uh, especially in art for creators, you see so many spaces right now, now like OpenSea and uh, Wax, who are offering uh, their third party platform, like we call it, uh, for creators to sell their art, you know. And some of them have been gamified, some not. Uh, we have the gaming, game to play or game to earn industry in uh, Web3 and the metaverse. We have healthcare and health insurances that will be developed very, very much after 2024 in the, in the Web3, in the decentralized space. We have the decentralized finance, who is already encompassing a lot of gamification right now, a lot of, a lot of uh, tools. We have the social fees. Look at essency.com, already gamified. They belong to Hive blockchain. We have ad tech, 
decentralized apps and front ends. And I've been working like crazy over the last three years on ad tech uh, decentralized applications to gamify their products. But there, there's much more in, in it in this decentralized space where gamification can just pour like water, you know, here and there and improve the, the end user experience. Well, the value that it brings, it all depends. It's not on, just on because it's a gamified product, uh, decentralized app or front end. It's also because it's in the blockchain and you have security. You have anonymity, and you can say like that forever. <laughs> you have safe and fast, almost instant transactions. You have the staking feature. So whatever you win as a reward, your badge, your points can be redeemable. And if they are liquid or the, if there are non-fungible tokens, NFTs, they can be staked and you can win <coughs> passive income because of that. So you see <coughs> rewards have new use cases uh, they can tokenize by themselves for you just with the staking feature uh yeah so users can own their gamified achievements most of them not 100 percent securely and tokenize on them passively or win on the margins or uh, actively selling reselling and stuff like that more process because the gamified design of those products is in the decentralized space is ownership. You have the keys to your account. That's total ownership. You have the badges and everything else, any collectible that becomes an NFT. In the social fee, social finance area, every post is your uh, own, it becomes an NFT. You can tokenize on it for seven days and people would pay just because you, you're posting. Um, and you can win points for those posts. You can win points just for being there, for your energy of being in that blockchain, being present, not on all of them. Uh, yeah, so just like I said, most of the what we used to new points, badges, leaderboards, are not just static elements right now. They produce either energy, that staked tokens that allow you to do more and more in the system, or they can win you liquid rewards if you sell them or if you rent them, because you can also rent your points. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. It's a next step. That's a, a real level up. And that's just me hurrying to to fill in this session with some info, but that's that's so much opportunity right there. And here's a hard truth. Uh, gamification is a web 3.0, uh, in web 3.0 is both agent centric and data centric. And some of the people out there would not taste that. They, they wanna keep their data safe. They wanna keep their data, their data hidden, you know? But let's not worry. You can function in the blocks like an end user experiencing a gamified uh, environment and still keep your data safe, keep it private, even sell it because you have total ownership. And even gain points for that, even gain badges for that. That's, that's a lot to talk about and we can talk about it in the end. From user to data, we have the gamified experience, and it's it's so new. It's like a it's it's like a baby. The gamification in the blockchain right now, it's like a baby because there's so much opportunity. The, the old designers like me still play with the old tools, but there's so much more we can create, and I I I. I expanded as much as I could, and as much as the blockchain and the businesses in the blockchain are. Uh, allowing me to. So why gamification is an agent-centric, uh, gamification design is agent-centric in the blockchain? Because it encourages people to participate and contribute in the network. You remember I told you we're, we're all bees? We're, when we, we're talking about the critical mass in the blockchain, that means those people in high blockchain, steam blockchain, Solana, or anything else, uh, thrown. 
uh, they become not just owners of their own assets in the, that blockchain, but they become active participants and they're putting the bricks together, you know, in the social fee, in the financial uh, area. Some of them even created a, a, a decentralized Wikipedia. We have things that are very new, you know. Some of them created just for free an alternative to YouTube without... Uh, censorship, you know. Anyway, so uh, this allows users to build their reputation by improving knowledge on the blockchain and taking actions to support the network. Now, you see, when you're in the blockchain and you're gamifying something that like that, you can say that that user has a fair score system, a fair leader leadership position, because everybody can see and track his data in the blocks, his activities. Some of them even have their wallets open. <laughs> well, the gamification design can help create better user, user experiences in blockchain. And, and uh, users are incentivized to interact with games, like look at... Uh, uh, hive there, uh, they have Splinterlands, they have the Raising Star, and if you're there, of course, you're just rewarded for experiencing that game in that blockchain, you know. Uh, decentralized app, front end, no matter what, once you're there, you're winning the rewards, and many of the blockchains are giving rewards just for you to be there, and those points are redeemable. Um... Yeah, the agent-centric approach complements blockchain technology itself as decentralized consensus algorithm uh, allow users to take control of their own transactions and data. Isn't that amazing? Uh, gamification design tips. How can gamification design for social finance front ends of any blockchain can be done. When I say social finance front end, just imagine Facebook in a blockchain, but every like gets you some money from the other user. Uh, you can win points, you can win badges for activities or for participating in events, whatever. Whatever you do is, reward, is being rewarded. <sighs> But once again, that's not happening for every social fee in every blockchain. So I'm going to give you some points, some pillars of how I'm doing that and how I'm using the gamification design to incentivize the end user and his or her digital print in the blockchain. Because every product that I create lately in the last few years has been designed for the blockchain we need users to, the end users to be active. And that's a digital print they create for themselves, the activities. Uh, here's a few pillars for gamifying, like how I'm doing. Uh, social front ends. Of course, you know the design, you know how it needs to be done, but there are some other stuff here. First of all, leverage the benefits of blockchain technology, exactly what I was saying. Secondly, incorporate smart contracts and see which blockchain is used, and that will give you some answers. Develop unique virtual assets. And when I say unique, it, it's not just a matter of how they look. It's a matter of creating more and more competitive advantages for the momentum, for that business that you're working for, for that product. Well, And fourth, implement interesting incentive and rewards. Interesting for retention, interesting for fun, interesting for advocacy. And here are the steps. First of all, what I do, I analyze the white paper, the light paper, the tokenization, I go into the elicitation uh, talks with the teams from that business. And then from there, I just design the flow of the dynamics according to those and when we come to number one, to leverage the benefits of blockchain technology, we have social fee uh, 
that you, you know social fees are using the power of the blockchain to connect the various elements of game mechanics and dynamics allowing users to store data track process progress and securely win upload store rent even gamified in uh, items and this will also help protect users funds and allow them to on progress without relying other platforms or, or third-party services. Secondly, you, I'm creating rewards for any transactions that they do in that product, be it a game or a dApp or a front-end, because it's very important for them maybe daily to, to, to have fair and secure transactions, to track them and to share their achievements. Once they do that, and because they do that, they are rewarded. Another thing, uh, number two, de develop unique virtual assets. Well, by implementing dynamic virtual assets, the end users can show off their accomplishments and show share them with other participants. But not just that, they can share them in Web2. And that means advocacy. And that means Web3 can show off out there on Web3, what they on Web2, what they already have. and bring new soldiers, new troops. <laughs> and they are rewarded for that as well, be the badge or uh, redeemable points. And uh, this also helps with enhancing the gamified experience uh, immersion and create more opportunities for reward and recognition. Recognition is a must. Uh, just look at picked.com uh, front end and they have so many levels of badges for recognition. And one of them is even a, a, one of the rewards is even a whale, a, a real whale. Anyway, um, four, rewards, virtual currency. Yeah, we were in the blockchain. So when we're talking about rewards, more, most of the people want liquid tokens, but that's not going to happen. It's going to be some points. It's going to be some badges. It's going to be some uh, some transactional uh, stuff that they they win. You know, it's all for the progress. It's all for the, their engagement. Um, or if they receive a huge reward, that's going to be staked for a tribe or another from from a front end or another in the social fee. Uh, because it's all designed for advocacy, but also retention. So you can't uh, just put it all, all liquid out there. Uh, mm. Some tips for uh, designing gamification design for dApps, decentralized apps. And that can be in every area. That can happen anywhere and they're developing like crazy right now there's an app that i like it's called activate that you, you it's called activate you can check it on activate.io also it's for fitness uh it pays you for five thousand steps for, for uh per day it's it's a good i didn't do it <laughs> but it's it's an old app that uh, it's placed on the blockchain one of the first ones so uh what should we do as designers when we're gamifying uh, a decentralized application? Just like we, we did it so far, we have incentives, rewards, and you. I already told you that in this case, we have points tokens, non-fungible tokens, redeemable badges, and so on. And by the way, once a user can sell his badge, especially in the hybrid uh, ecosystem that I've built called Mintist. Uh, once they sell their badges and they can even sell their progress, they lose everything, you know, or they can sell uh, chunks of them, you know. Uh, that's that's very relevant because you can work and just sell everything you have achieved for another one. But that's going to put you out there on a on a nice and cozy financial setting. <laughs> social scores and there's a, a global fuss about social scores right now. But 
it's happening. It's already happening. We don't need to wait for 2024 digitalization and the European Union agenda to, to open our eyes. It's happening. It's in the blockchain. It's going to stay there. <laughs> so visible. Uh, but social score is present also in the DAP, in the decentralized apps. And we have leaderboards. Some of them will be centralized in the future, especially for medical purposes. I don't want to get too much into it. I'm just going to tell them we have action, auctions. Um, that's the ability to put assets up for auction, and that provides a new layer for of interaction for dApps. We and, and that's happening. Just look at OpenSea. Um, you have o o auctions for uh, NFTs, but we're not talking about really about including auctions in a gamified product. When we're talking about auctions in the gamified product, people, people are uh, receiving incentive, incentivized uh, behavior as well. Oh yeah, we have subscription tiers. Uh, we have microtransactions and payment solutions, uh, bridging different wallets, and you're rewarded for using a different wallet. Let's say you want to use a, a Binance wallet, you want to use BSC, or you want to use a, um, a Hive keychain wallet, or a, the Sneaky Fox uh, MetaMask wallet, whatever you use, because some of the blockchains are including most of them, you'll be rewarded. Anyway, um, so you're getting part of the transaction back, part of the money that you put back. Okay, so yeah, and there are federated gaming uh, where you can integrate multiple small games into a complex dApps, and that allows against each other and share rewards to the blockchain that's for retention as well it's all in the design but these are just a few maybe not so significant uh matter that i wanted to discuss with you the fact is another one with the positioning of your product in the blockchain through a decentralized app you go global. That's not a static, organic product anymore and waiting for people to come in. When you put it in the blockchain, you put it out there on an entire blockchain that has an entire critical mass that they're just waiting to test your product because they will win rewards. They will win either liquidities, either NFTs or staked rewards. So you just... Put it out there for the people to, to take advantage of it instantly when you launch it. Mm. Now, we see so many people wanted to go off grid, and I've been working with some of them, gamifying their products in the blockchain. Uh, but we see this interest of companies towards application or, or, or decentralized applications or front ends to, to, to nurture a better living and wellness for, for others. And look at ActiveFeed, Willcoin, Move to Earn. They were designed in the blockchain as decentralized application to enhance a low carbon economy with green mobility. So they reward users for moving greener. Here's a few things or how I did the gamification design for this kind of apps. Mostly I've been working uh, under a non-disclosure contract, so most of my contracts are not visible. Uh, but here is how I've done it. Just like before, reading the white paper or even making the white paper, making the tokenization plan on my own with the other members of the team, you know, as a head of development. Uh, and then just focusing on the gamification design by leveraging rewards and incentives to drive the regenerative uh, finance usage in that in that product, be it a front end or decentralized app, utilizing achievement badges to motivate progress, you know, in that product, incorporating structured game mechanics to promote adoption, 
establishing leaderboards to showcase the best practices, not just for bragging, not just for creating, um, um, you know, a fuzz, and creating motivational campaigns around regenerative finance activities. So if you look at the regenerative finance um, in the blockchain, you'll see so much potential and interest for coming from governments as well at this point. So if you want to jump in as a designer, a gamification designer, and that's close to your heart, go because it's a, it's a great experience to build something that, you know, it's for the environment as well, not just for agent-centric for the people, but for the environment as well. <sighs> well, mind, body, regenerative finance, gamify design. Mm. Just a few words that I wanted you to know. To avoid designing sterile, uh, unfeeling, unethical, and dangerous techno states, and maybe you know what I'm talking about, I'm inserting in most of my blockchain gamified designs elements that feed the spirit, the mind, the body, social elements, and those that help the earth so that the end user has a whole and resilient experience. But that happens only in the regenerative finance gamified design for decentralized apps or front ends. We all have to appeal to our higher self. <laughs> I'm gonna try and go through this stuff a little faster. Well, I was telling you that each blockchain has its tribe and not just the tribe, not just the critical mass. In each front end, you see a community for different games, a community for different um, front ends, look at leofinance.com, uh, look at Tron, uh, look at uh, Click Talk Profit. Uh, some of them are on marketing, some of them are um, economists, uh, some of them are for music, and so on, you know. Um, but after all, being in an entire ecosystem on that blockchain, they create the critical mass, these tribes. So we can say that the entire ecosystem, the entire blockchain can be gamified in a way or another. And that ha that is already happening with the proposal, the new proposal in Hive. Um, so what am I doing? And that's different to what others are doing in the blockchain right now. I'm enacting the ecosystemic consciousness uh, in a pure manner. So along with digitalization in Web3, we can find a critical mass for a blockchain out there, just like I was saying, not just for the tokens, because people are not there just for the tokens. They're there to build a system. And I don't mean influencers or decentralized influencers, influencers. I mean that through the gamified design, it's very easy to create engagement and advocacy at different levels in the blockchain. It feeds safety, a sense of belonging, social needs, and financial needs as well. Uh, we have the social finance uh, now, and we have metaverses for fun and expanding more of the experience through that and ownership of collectibles. We have play to earn blockchain games. We have sports dApps and music, leisure, and financial front-ends, just like Facebook, but decentralized, just a, a, like I was saying. Well, people get paid just to post their anything from their daily, personal, and professional life, and they have their friends there. <laughs> so it's not just Facebook, it's not just uh, Pinterest, it's not just Twitter, it's much more. <clears throat> so many people millions of it in a blockchain and you're gamifying for that you don't know their types you don't know what they want but you can you just use the deal pyramids of change of belonging identity environment beliefs and design on that and that's why the gamification designs that i do are agent centric most of them are done by enacting human humans as an ecosystem consciousness by having players collaborate and compete to each other by gamifying in the blockchain 
you know, I can offer the end user the simulated environment that encourages human interaction and connections on multiple levels, especially in the in the metaverses that I build. And that goes for interconnectedness between people, groups, and technologies. And most of the gamification designs that I do seek to foster a sense of collective responsibility and agency that help create positive emotions and engagement between human groups and their environments. Yeah. Uh, we had three points, you know, and uh, I was about to offer some incentives for those of you that would answer these questions. I'll just let you look can discuss uh, about them, but nevertheless, at the end of this session, which is very close, you all get your rewards. <laughs> it's free. When we're saying freedom in a blockchain, you have a lot of it. But you need to have energy, stake tokens, which is most of the time, to do more and more, you know. The metaverses are fun, but you need to have energy as well to function in the metaverse. Game finance is fun, and it offers a lot of freedom to create a lot of collectibles. So a lot of NFTs can be achieved in the game feed just for free, just for playing, and then they have value. Uh, but you have to have energy and everything is based on energy and attendance. <sighs> yeah. Fun, freedom and retention. We're going to talk about them if you want. Now, you know, there is a lady called Melissa Chumay, and two years ago, she, she's a, a financial economist. And two years ago, she said that the energy is the new currency. Well, that applies to Web3 as well. Uh, energy is resource credits. You have to design a gamification product that is based on energy. When people don't have energy anymore, they can buy. They can buy their token, their tokens, take it, and that becomes energy. You know, uh, but the fact is that your freedom is limited to this energy in the blockchain. Uh, the more you achieve, the more, the more you have. So it's a system designed for achievers, especially because only achievers can experience more and more and more. Newcomers have their role, just like in any experience and gamified experience as well. Just getting accustomed and seeing the environment, getting in the magic circle to get accustomed with it. In the metaverse as well, you need to have energy. But on the other side, you have the social fee front end where you can create a lot of energy, get a lot of liquidities just by uh, posting or in the movement apps. So everything is gamified and is designed to offer rewards for you to have this energy to do more and to achieve more. Data is the new goal. Again, something that Melissa Chumay said, and I analyzed it a lot, and then I started to design around it. Now, you know, we, we're talking about Web2, and you know, there's been so much issue with the data stuff. Companies selling it, you couldn't have access to your data, and so on, or to other companies' data. Uh, that's why they, they did the, the, the lunar crash for Web2. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the end user should have the freedom to disclose it or not. You know, uh, what I want to, there's a lot written here, but that what I want to tell you is data is a gamified blockchain asset, user asset, and it should be like that on every blockchain. If they're saying it's decentralized, the data should be incentivized, should be gamified, like we did it in the Mintest ecosystem, hybrid ecosystem. Uh, and I did it for our other applications and Holochain app, apps. Data should be rewarded just because you're creating data in an environment that should be rewarded. Every time you create your data, it should be rewarded. And the fact that you're selling your data to someone by your own will, that should be rewarded because it goes from that environment off. Uh, it's a lot to discuss here, and 
especially because data in a blockchain means security, immutability, transparency, you know. Anyway, what I want to tell you is that I want to show you something. Uh, Web 2, Web 3, you know, we have the same players. It's the same money rolling. It's the, kind of the same gamification design, but not. Uh, it's a total paradigm shift. Even of the, a blue collar paradigm shift, you know, everything is changing and it's adopting new ways, new behavior. So I think I, I know I've been in a rush, but uh, I'm rewarding you with this stuff. <laughs> so you just won some tickets for business consultancy in uh, Web3, gamification business consultancy, and three hours of consultancy for metaverse design and gamification tools in the metaverse. I hope you're happy and thank you. All right, how's your battery doing? Do you have some time to Yeah, we will, we're good, we're good. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to think. Um, let's... Uh, We're taking it down to a table and discuss, but then we're limited how many people can talk. So let's do this. Uh, I the nature of uh, of the topic and the depth of it. If you want to and ask, I'll bring you up on stage to ask questions. Ask a so if there's a way to raise your hand, it would be helpful. Because I'm just afraid if we went down to one table, too many people would crowd around it. <laughs> so, who wants to ask a question? Or do you want to put it in chat? Everybody got scared all of a sudden. So we, there was a good chat going along. So I thought maybe it would work up here. All right, well, let's go ahead and put stuff in Q&A then. There we go. Bernardo wants to come up. I'll bring you up. Actually, Bernardo, you can come on up. Superpowers for some reason. Why is that? <laughs> I got to go figure that out. I was trying to, to clap some hands, but it yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> well... Let me see if I can see myself. Ah, I am here. I'm alive. I am sorry. I've been so absent, I feel. Can you see me? Oh, there you go. Hey. Um, <laughs> I was, um, I, I'm sorry I wasn't here for the entire, the, the entire talk, so I don't know if you addressed this. But um, I do believe that the um, NFTs, the, the NFT value for gamification is far beyond what you can monetize from it. Um, so have you seen any examples where they are actually using the NFT value of a non-fungible token into validating and securing that every transaction is as transparent as possible without the, the, the taking care of it as uh, then I can sell it or that stuff, but just using the fact that you will not be able to break the blockchain. Um, is there any example that we have of that? Can you rephrase that, Latif? Mm -mm. So think about it like this. Um, is there any gamification example out there that you know of where they use NFT to validate the user transactions? To validate user transactions, not to validate. Just because they're doing it, they can get some NFTs, you know? Like uh, you get um, an entry card in Splinterlands. It values, I don't know, $20.00 when you hop in for the first time when you jump in just because you 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 want to start tokenizing without that you cannot start tokenizing but for validating transactions no okay i don't know any okay thank you on the other side it was built by me and it will appear in the next year uh, we have the hybrid mintist uh, system and we have some dApps 
uh, that uh, just uh, allow you to, you know, to rent, to gain some more NFTs just because you're doing some transactions. But for validating in the blocks, there's no NFT reward right now. Oh, you can get just because you buy something, you buy their token and you're rewarded, not, but not for validation per se. Uh, there's in the Q and a, uh, you mentioned early on the pyramid of neurological change that, that sparks yeah. some interest. What is that? Or what does it look like? It's how the, how it's phrased. Well, yeah. The pyramid of neurological changes, uh, it's a product, uh, a solution that Robert Dills came with, uh, years ago, maybe 20 years ago uh for uh applying it not just in uh neurolinguistic programming but in every change management in in, in every change uh situation uh as an agent of change or not you know sometimes you just uh so it goes from the environment i'm here then your abilities um that's beliefs uh, values, identity, belonging, mission, and then your higher self. And that shows how you go from a stage to another in any experience. So you can be here arguing with your wife, you know, uh, about their identity. Oh, you look like your mother. Uh, oh, you have the same behavior, nosy behavior like your mother. And that's the belonging. It's very uh, is very high in our higher self, in, in our inner self. And to reduce the conflict, you just go to the environment. Would you want to have a tea and talk about it? You know, go to the environment and then you develop on uh, beliefs, on why do you thought so? Why, why do you think I'm behaving like that? You can have a clear discussion. But we can gamify on the, the neurological levels of change, and I'm using it every time. Because when people come to experience a product or, or, or a solution, they may have appreciative beliefs, depreciative beliefs, or neutral beliefs but they are somewhere they need that product for something so i'm gamifying something for uh people from south africa or let's say team the violinist from usa called me in nft oasis to help him gamify for a better gamification experience with that um uh, product it addresses to different people and you need to know where they stand. Even the business that approaches you, you need to know where, where they stand. But especially for the end, if you create stages of uh, developing the experience with Dale's Pyramid in the neurological changes of uh, uh, inner, uh, cha uh, pyramid of change, then you go from the environment to achieving their, their mission. Uh, through these stages, which is not just about the comfort of mind, comfort of status, identity, it's much more, you know? Good. Uh, next question. Uh, the big criticism of Web3 gamification is that most of it is very superficial and quick fix of people with more money than game design sense. <laughs> what is your view on the evolution of this? The evolution of what? Uh, uh, the criticism of Web3 is that status and... Yeah. So we have greed. We have greed because every person is putting some money there. They want to they want to see the bull, they want to see the momentum, they want to size the opportunity and get it or transact on the margins when the, the token is getting up and have their, their slice of the pie, and you know. Uh, so th there's a lot of, of greed, there's a lot of maximalists for every token, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about creating a a ecosystem, engaging ecosystems where people can share parts of, the uh, of their time. We even have app the application, decentralized apps for cars, you know, for how much you drive, or if you have problems with your car, you can call a number, call a company, and they would help you. You would be paid just for calling them, you know? And it's a lot. Uh, 
status and greed. Well, the status it's about it's going to be more and more about social credit, uh, social scores, you know. And uh, but you you the status in the blockchain and i've been working like a horse in the blockchain not just as a gamification designer or head of management like an end user you know to create some money without working for a business in the blockchain just to to be an end user to benefit of some products to see how high i can get and i was having two cervical hernias and i was in bed and i was just doing this you know so I managed to do it all without pu putting any money out there. And I didn't know, knew the trick or the, uh, I didn't have the blueprint. Uh, yeah, incentivizing. Well, you're not just incentivizing the uh, volatility or an economy you don't trust. You're incentivizing behaviors. You're nurturing breathing and that breathing is energy in the blockchain, they're creating wealth on that energy, on that breathing, on that, that attendance and positioning. Uh, well, it's a matter of perspective, you know, uh, of optics and approach. And I'm not a dual person. Well, I was hurrying, good. Sherry, but I still have a uh, battery, <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> hurrying that much. <laughs> So when we go to the floor, let's do this, um, Elena, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a, a little room called uh, Leaders Lounge. So if you okay. people yeah. can uh, come and see you over there. Is that, okay. Does that work okay. for everyone? Good to hear you didn't lose your battery. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure that's all we're here. All right, so let's um, let's do that. So we have uh, half an hour for those of you not uh, discussing that. Let's let's do think about the future of the programs that that you're doing. I list here of things that we're covering. Here we go. When you think of a project or uh, project or projects uh, call the for the use of gamificational learning, and what ideas do you have for implementing one project? So thinking about what we just heard, what would uh, a step forward in technology programs that you're currently working on? So that'll give us a discussion at yeah. the tables. And I will, so uh, Alina, you head to that area. If you if you're not enough people there, uh, talk amongst yourselves. And we will <laughs> be setting up for a shift change here. I'm about to uh, get, uh, try and get to sleep here in an hour or so, <laughs> and the day shift in the United States is about to take over. So uh, we're, we're negotiating, making sure uh, that the people on the overnight are informing the people on the daytime. So uh, I'll take us down.